Royalty, NSR.T, is a Canadian royalty and streaming company with an international portfolio of 14 royalty stream and gold loan assets, six of which are currently producing mines. A diversified risk profile, best-in-class dividends, and an experienced management team are just a few aspects of what drive Nomad's attractive valuation as it grows its low-cost production profile through the acquisition of additional streams and royalties. If none of that made any sense to you, you are in the right place. Hi, I'm Maddie Grace. This is Five Easy Questions, breaking down the public market for new investors. Today, I'm speaking with Nomad Royalty founder, chief investment officer, and director, Joseph de la Plante, for a layperson translation of the market, company, and its leadership. Thank you so much for being here with us, Joseph. Hi, Maddie. Thanks for having me. All right. I will just jump right in. What is a royalty streaming company and how is it different from a mining company? So a royalty and streaming company is essentially you know, a, a type of company that um, exists in the precious metal space. Uh, and it, we differ from operators in the sense that we don't own any mines. Uh, what we own is contracts on mines where we're, we get to receive a percentage of the mines metal production, uh, typically gold and silver for the duration of the mine. Uh, and so what that allows us to do is have a tremendous amount of cash flow and revenue within a very small platform. At Nomad, we're actually only six employees, um, but we were able to generate $30 million in revenues last year because of this business model that's been tremendously powerful in generating a, a growing bottom line for investors. Because once we make our initial investment, we have no further investment to make uh, over the course of our contracts. And so everything that happens at the mines through exploration and expansions, we get all the benefit of without necessarily having to invest any further. Okay, this is not my purview. So I'm just going to really dumb it down for me personally. Basically, you just don't have to get your hands dirty in the physical mines. You just provide the funds in exchange for a future payoff. That is correct. So we, we, we enter into financing agreements. We receive these metal streams. We're actively trading gold and silver every day. Um, but we have no hands in the operations. We don't, you know, we don't have a say in how they're run. The, the, that's left to the operators. Um, really, we're more of a financial company. And the nice thing too, as a, as a royalty company, is we have a portfolio. So as an investor, you don't have to go and pick and choose which exploration company you want to invest in or which producer to invest in. You can rely on us because we do all the due diligence on every single opportunity. And you get to buy our portfolio and our picks um, and really, you know, avoid that whole job yourself. And so that's why we're there. Oh, brilliant. That's how I would do it. <laughs> um, what is the difference between owning a dividend stock and a growth stock? So um, there's, you know, a certain philosophy about how we run and grow our businesses. Um, I guess the idea generally is that if you're a company that's growing, you want to make sure you keep all your cash uh, to dedicate into your operations, uh, because that's you know, in principle, why your investors are buying your shares. Uh, the flip side of that is a dividend stock is something we would consider to be more mature, uh, where there's a good amount of cash flow and there's an ability to return some of that through to the shareholders uh, to get an extra yield on top of the appreciation in the share price. The royalty companies are actually an interesting combination of the both, because um, even though we are companies that are meant to grow over time, we have such high amounts of, of operating margins and cash flow, we can actually do both. And, and we at Nomad, we're quite dedicated to having a very high dividend yield. We actually have the highest dividend yield in the royalty space. And even I'd say in the mining industry as a whole, we have, we're, we're in the top 15 dividend payers. Uh, if you look at companies that are $250 million and greater. So royalty companies kind of give you the best of both worlds. And that's why it's a great way to invest in gold and silver. Nice. All right. Um, what is a commodity super cycle and are we in one now? So we think of the, the gold and silver space and commodity space in general as something that's cyclical. Uh, and that reflects general macroeconomic trends around you know, growth in the economy and what that translates into in terms of supply for new materials. Uh, and I include gold and silver in there because largely, um, you know, the, the thinking around investing in gold and silver is as a reaction to what's happening in the greater economy, where oftentimes investors look for that inflation hedge in their portfolio or that portfolio insurance. Um, you know, we strongly think that we're at the beginning of a new cycle for gold. Uh, the pandemic has only exacerbated a lot of the different 
financial crisis that we see across the world and a, a general trend towards more debt for government governments and more uh, printing of, of, um, of uh, paper money. And so, you know, all of the factors that we've been tracking over the last 10 years keep piling up and adding up, you know, uh, debt that's negative yielding. Um, for us, this lays the perfect uh, groundwork for a prolonged run in the commodity price. And so Nomad, we're entering into the royalty space uh, at the right time. We've already seen a tremendous growth in the commodity price since we listed the business. So there's tons of value already in our portfolio, uh, but we see lots of value out there as well as we look for new assets. Great. Um, how important is jurisdiction in considering a mining stock? It's very important. <laughs> um, and, and the key reason is that, you know, contrary to a lot of different businesses where you have sometimes a choice on where you build a plant or, or you know, where you want to make your products, uh, the mining business, we don't choose where the mines are. And once we invest our capital, it's invested and we cannot move it. So it's important to understand what the environment is for mining uh, in the jurisdictions where you're invested. Um, you know, obviously avoiding areas that have a history of expropriation of, of mining companies and foreign investment. Um, and, and I think the thing is too to recognize is there's no perfect jurisdiction. And these, these investments are for the most part, you know, a mine can run from 30 to 60 years. And so even the best jurisdictions over that time horizon will have ups and downs in terms of their policies for mining and their incentives for mining. So I think a good approach is to look at a balanced, uh, diversified portfolio where you can have some exposure to the best mining jurisdictions, some exposure to some, you know, uh, jurisdictions that have a history of, of mining, but are perhaps not considered to be tier one jurisdictions. And overall, what you'll find is that uh, you'll be sheltered largely from, you know, changing dynamics in any given jurisdiction. Amazing. And last of the five questions, what are Nomad's ESG guidelines? Uh, so ESG is obviously a very important topic when it comes to mining. Uh, you're, you know, you're considering the fact that uh, a mine is a dynamic uh, operation within, you know, it's in its own environment within its local communities. Um, so what we do when we invest is we dig quite deep in terms of you know, the practices in relation to, to the environment, how, how the mine manages water and tailings um, and the relationship with the community. Is it a positive relationship? Uh, do they have the ability to um, work with their community and hire locally uh, to include some of, of the, the, local, um, the local people into the operation? and overall have a very positive relationship and positive impact on things like education and um, you know, overall quality of life uh, for the people working at the mine and for, for the people around the mine. So it's high on our list when we invest in terms of the criteria, you know, we have pretty stringent criteria. And I think overall the mining industry is uh, doing a good job of putting in place new practices, um, perhaps not new practices, but you know, increasing practices on the ESG front. And it's becoming a big uh, topic for investors as well. So mm -hmm. it's nice to see the, the mining uh, industry react accordingly. And I can certainly say as a royalty company, as an investor in the space, uh, we definitely wanna have an impact in this front. Oh, I love that. So good to hear. Okay, I just have a really quick rapid fire round. Are you ready? Sure. Yeah. Tea or coffee? Coffee. Good call. What is the first thing you do in the morning? Um, get my kids out of bed and, and make them a bowl of cereal or breakfast. What is your favorite sport to watch? I am Canadian and the answer to that has to be hockey, therefore. <laughs> <laughs> what is your favorite sport to play? Uh, well, that's a, that's a tie between hockey and I also am a big rock climber. I own a, a rock climbing business uh, with my family. So something that I was born into and um, I still enjoy to this day. Okay, favorite book? Ooh, that's, uh, that's a challenging one. Well, I can oh. say that, um, you know, of late, some of the good reads uh, um, that other than the, 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 book, the books that I, that I read to my children, mm -hmm. um, I, <laughs> I can <laughs> say that, uh, um, What would be a good one? Um, Never rest on your oars, which is the story of how tech was, was built. 
Ooh, um, okay, that's a good perhaps one. a recommendation for the readers uh, interested in, in looking about the history of mining and some of the entrepreneurs. Uh, that's a very good one. Awesome. Um, cat or dog? Dog. Value investor or day trader? Value by far. <laughs> uh, suit and tie or casual? Casual. If you had a thousand dollars to invest, what company would it be not your own? That's hard because I've <laughs> mostly ever made money investing in my own companies. <laughs> um, That's a good answer. <laughs> uh, listen, I think there's, there's a lot of interesting new ventures out there. Um, mm -hmm. Certainly have my eye on a couple. Uh, I am quite interested in the, in the EV space and what's happening uh, in that side. Um, I've recently invested in a company called QuantumScape. Uh, which is a new battery technology business. Um, so following that one closely, it's one of many that I follow, but we'll see what happens. And finally, last question, special request from my coworker, where does gold close at the end of the year? Um, that's a great question. And it's something that we spent a lot of time studying and, and trying to understand in which direction we're heading. Uh, we saw an interesting spike last year going over $2,000 an ounce for gold, which was the first time uh, in history, really. Um, our view is that we're going to be testing that again this year, and we should be closing, you know, I guess conservatively between $2,000 and, and $2,500 an ounce, if not more. Wow, amazing. Okay, that is all for today. Thank you so much for taking the time and joining us. And hopefully we get to talk to you again in the future. Thank you very much for having me.